In this video, I'm going to show you how to investigate an error using Rollbar. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to select the items view. And in this case here, I'm interested in investigating a Spring Boot application. I'm interested in errors for the last month. And in this case here, I'm interested in warnings, errors, and criticals. I'm just going to clean up my screen a little bit. And what we can see here is that uh, there have been a series of deployments, and since the most recent deployment, we've had five different errors occurring. You can see here that this has been the trend of the errors over the last 24 hours, uh, how often the error has occurred, and when the error last occurred. So I'm going to investigate one of them in more detail. So the first thing to do is to look at these three screens here. So this is telling me that this error is occurring in the last 60 minutes. So this is occurring right now. And it's been occurring uh, for a period of time over the last few months. The next area I look at is people. And what this here is showing me is that this error is impacting many people once. Uh, in the case of the person object here, we're just capturing a, an ID, a user ID, but you can optionally also capture a username and uh, an email address. The next two to look at, uh, particularly for UI-based applications, might be the browser OS and the IP address is impacted. Uh, and then here, we, what we can see here is that this is the deployment that we suspect caused the error. And here we see the commits associated with that deployment. And the reason we can do that is that this fingerprint here, which is the fingerprint that Rollbar gave the error, started occurring after that deployment. We can see here that this is uh, the same fingerprint or the same error has been occurring in other environments. Uh, Rollbar also thinks that these errors look quite similar and are worth investigating as well. And that every time this particular error occurs, this error also occurs. So again, lots of extra information about the particular error. Now, if you want to look at all occurrences, you can just open the occurrences tab here. And this here is the list of all occurrences. Uh, but or you can just select this here maybe and you might just be interested in the most recent uh, minute when errors were occurring. And here we can just click down into this. And again, this here is the raw error, including the non-project Java frames. And here's the full uh, exception here. And through the source control integration, you can link out to the file here in the source control system. We've pulled in plus and minus five lines of code. Over here, you can click on this and to see who last modified that using git blame. And again, that's the case for each frame of the stack trace. Just moving down a little bit, we again, we this is a table view of important information in the error. So we have our code version, we have context that's being sent along. In this case here, I'm sending four custom fields with extra information that are useful when I'm investigating an error. Uh, the environment and then moving down here. So this here is a Java Spring application. And what we can see here, the request data here, we're scrubbing some of the data before it leaves the, the, the Spring Boot application. And then further down, what we see here is a curl command that will help us to reproduce the error. The actual raw data in the error is down here. So we can see here all the frames of the stack trace. And that there also includes all of the the, the non-project frames, so the, the Java language frames of the stack trace. And then moving down here, we can see here, these here, this here is my custom information as well here. Now, the reason this is interesting is because any of this data can be used either to configure your notification. So maybe you want to notify an APM solution or a bug tracking system or a chat system, and you can use any of the data in the error to do that. You can also use it to create queries to external systems. So in this case here, I have a query back to Rollbar itself using some data in the uh, error payload. There's a query here that I've built to CloudWatch, which uses queries for non-error data related to a particular session. And it could be you just want to, let's say, search on Google for this error message and that for this language. So again, very quickly, you've built up a good understanding of what the cause of the problem is, and hopefully you know what you need to do to fix it.
A few things here to note here, you can mute errors if you, uh, you're not in a position to fix them and you don't want to be looking at them in your timeline. Uh, if something is coming in as an error and it's causing lots of notifications, but it's really just a warning, if you reduce its severity to warning, uh, then that will probably mean that your, your notifications will stop occurring. You can assign errors to, to individuals here and colleagues using the within rollbar itself. Or you can, let's say, just create a JIRA ticket or something, a ticket in a, in a bug tracking system from within Rollbar. You can also set up Rollbar to do that automatically. But let's here, in this case here, let's mark it as resolved. Maybe I uh, know a particular commit number to include here, and I'm going to mark the error as resolved. So that's the process for investigating errors with Rollbar. Thanks for your time.